Hey everybody, welcome to Move with James. I'm James, unsurprisingly. In this dynamic vinyasa flow, we're going to build some strength, get our core, our shoulders and our arms really working, but at the same time, we're not going to put any weight in the feet or the ankles at all. So if you have a foot or an ankle injury, or you have something like plantar fasciitis, this flow is going to be perfect for you. Just because you have a foot or an ankle injury doesn't mean you have to lose the practice that you love. You can still build strength, you can still flow, but just in a different way. Let's explore that together and begin. So we're going to start on the hands and knees. So bring yourself around to all fours, hands below shoulders, knees below hips, and just sense what position works for you in your ankle or foot right now. You know, for some people, just allowing the feet to just rest, that might be better. But for some people, tucking the toes might feel okay, might feel better. But focus mostly on pressing down through the hands and gently down through the knees. We're gonna sway side to side as we start to warm up the body, preparing for our flow. As you move side to side, gently press the fingertips down, waking up the hands and the shoulders. Now start to make small circles over your wrists. Again, letting the feet and the ankles just happily rest behind you. They are not gonna do anything. <laughs> Circle the other way. Start to tap into your breath. Gently lengthening and slowing it down. But breathing in a way that feels good. Now as you come back to center, from here, press into your hands, send your hips back a little bit. If that feels okay, you could go a little bit further. If it doesn't feel okay, pause where it starts to feel not okay. Let's take a couple of breaths, otherwise going back. Now slowly come forwards, bring the shoulders above the wrists and back. As you rock, keep a gentle press through the hands. And now from here, as you come forwards, step your hands forwards about two or three more inches, and now bring your shoulders above your wrists. Slowly drop your hips, your ribs, your heart, bend the elbows, lie down. Cobra as you breathe in. Push into the hands, send your hips back towards your version of a child's pose. Let's do that again. Inhale, shoulders over wrists, and hips first, then ribs, then heart. Cobra breathing in. Child's pose, breathing out. Two more. Round your back as you come forwards. Ripple down like a wave on the shore. Cobra. Child's pose. Round back, inhaling. Exhaling, lowering down. Riding the inhale. Child's pose coming back. From here, come back to all fours. This time, if it feels okay to do so, bend the knees and gently cross the ankles. If that doesn't work, don't worry, leave the feet where they are. From here, tuck your tailbone, squeeze your glutes. Elbows in as you lower down to the ground, slowly down. Hands are by your upper chest. We're going to push back up. Exhale, back up onto the knees two more times. Inhale to prepare, tuck the tailbone. Exhale, down, chaturanga on the knees. And push back up. Last time, elbows in, core strong. Release the legs, cobra. Tiles pose. Once again, coming forwards. This time, bring the hands back under your shoulders. On the knees, start to reach the right leg up and back. Just let the foot or the ankle do whatever feels good. And now bring the knee gently towards the nose. Scoop in and back. Two more, knee to nose. Push the floor away. Let's get your core going. And now take the leg back, pause here. Make a scorpion tail shape. Lift the chest, push through the hands. Return the knee, let's switch sides. Left leg comes up. 
need to know is curl, lengthen, knee to nose. You don't have to touch, but you might. Some people can. Lots of people can't, so don't worry. And this time, Scorpion, look forwards, press through the hands. Knee comes down, step your hands forwards a little bit. And once again, ankles cross, if that feels okay. Lowering down, elbows in for three, push back up, exhale. Lowering down, two, exhale. And one, strong core, tuck the tailbone. Lower all the way down, release the legs. Cobra breathing in. Child's pose as far as feels good. Once again, come to all fours. Slide the right leg back, lift the leg. Knee towards the nose. And back, scorpion tail this time. Lift into a gentle back bend. Knee to nose. Scorpion. And knee to nose. And this time as the leg comes back, pause, bend the knee, press through the hands, and then take the knee out to the side this time, and then back. Take the knee out to the side, in line with your hip, and back. One more time. And back, knee comes down. From here, listen closely. Left leg comes back, knee to nose. Two more times. Really push through the hands. Strong arms, strong shoulders. That's what it's about. And now from here, scorpion. Let's do one more knee to nose. Scorpion. Straighten the leg and now bring the knee out to the left, right out to the side. Use those glutes. Three, level the hips. Two, level the hips. One. Release, walk your hands forwards, shoulders over the wrists, breathe in, tuck the tailbone. Lower down halfway this time, just halfway. Push back up, three. Elbows in, two, one. All the way down, this time pause, low cobra, and start to reach your hands back, reach through the fingertips. Lift the chest. If it feels okay to do so, you could lift the feet, lift the knees, really lift up into locust. Four more breaths. Three, option to link the fingers now if that feels good. Two, one, lower down. Come onto the forearms here. Sphinx pose. Bend the knees. And very gently swish the legs to one side and then to the other. One side and then the other. Again, always just exploring what feels okay. Yeah. And now come back once again, push back up onto the knees. Child's pose for a moment. This time coming back onto the forearms, staying on the knees. Right leg comes up and back, same thing but on the forearms, tricky. Knee towards the nose, you've got to really scoop this time. Take the leg back and in, two, last one, three. Take the leg back, bend the knee, bring the knee out to the side for three. Keep your shoulders over your elbows, two, and one. Replace the knee, prepare for the second side. From here, left leg back, knee comes in. Three. Use this to stretch your back. And out the side. Last one. Lower down from here, back onto the hands and chaturanga to the ground. Push back up, three, all the way down, elbows in, you've got this, two, building more strength, one, all the way down, locust pose once more, reach back. This time as an option, you might bend the knees, don't catch the feet with the hands, bend the knees, lift the knees, draw the hands back, and over. 
foot and ankle free bow. Two more breaths. Really feel those glutes and release. Take a moment to rest. You could rock your hips if that feels good. From here, take your right arm out to the side. And your left hand, could you bring it next to your um, left upper chest like you would do in a cobra? And then we're gonna roll a little bit. I'm just stacking my knees. I'm not putting my foot on the floor. I'm rolling onto my right side, knees bent. Nice shoulder and chest stretch. And then we'll come back and switch over. And then return. From here, come back up. Coming back to the hands and the knees, we're going to play a little game for a moment. So, on the hands and knees, rock the weight forwards and back a couple times. If that feels okay, take the hands forwards another inch. Rock forwards and back. Now pause, tuck your tailbone under, squeeze your abs. Option to walk the hands forwards another inch if that feels good. Rock forwards, keep the tailbone tucked and back. Let's do that again. So what I'm not doing is lowering into a back bend. I'm keeping everything scooped in and tucked under and back. If that feels okay, take your hands further forwards. Really tuck under with the tailbone, scoop the belly in, shoulders forwards and back. Two more. And release, and now as a final flourish, keep your hips pretty much above your knees, scoop your tummy in, maybe creep the hands forwards a little bit further away. Keep pressing into the hands, straighten the arms, take the hands further away. Maybe now start to let the hips come forwards, creeping, creeping, and then push back. Come all the way back up. From here, we're gonna come round to sit. Take your legs to one side and gently swivel round. So you've done a lot of work in the hands. They're gonna get a little break now. Shake them out. From here, take your hands behind your knees and lift up with the feet and the legs into a supported boat pose. You could have your feet apart if that works better for you, or you could squeeze the knees and the feet together if that feels okay. Either way, start to take the hands away, reach the fingertips forwards, keep the feet floating. Option one, breathe here, lift the chest. Option two, straighten the left leg and then re-bend and switch, right leg, and switch, her left leg. And then let's go one after the other. You could even tap the ground with the toe if that feels good. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Bend the knees, slowly lower down, keep the feet off the floor, knees above the hips. I get attacked by my plant. Knees above the hips, shins parallel to the floor. Reach your hands forwards. We're going to curl up, chin to chest. Five, four, three, two, one. Pause, hold it. Option to straighten the legs at a 45 degree angle. And lower the head back down, lift up. Five, four, three, two, one. Hold it. Bring your knees in, lie down. Take a little rock side to side. From here, link your fingers behind your left thigh and begin to straighten the left leg up towards the sky. Just let your foot relax, let it be at peace. If this feels okay to you, you might start to slide the hands further up the leg towards the calf. I've not put my right foot on the ground. You could do if that feels okay but you don't have to. As an option now, straighten the left leg, and again, draw yourself up towards the shin. If you're really bendy, you could hold the ankle and bring the shin towards your face. We're getting a hamstring stretch and a bit of sneaky core work. Three, two, one. From here, bring the knee in 
and switch sides. Link behind the right thigh. The leg lengthens and reaches. You might breathe here. You might slide the hands further up. Keep the legs straight as you curl up, drawing the head and the shin towards each other. Three, two, one. Release. Take a happy baby, either holding the knees or maybe the calf or the shin. We're going to continue with our core work. Take a big breath in. Get some oxygen from here. Once again, float the knees above the feet. Fingertips reach forwards. And now lift up. Lower back down. This time straighten the legs towards the ceiling. Lift up, reach the hands forwards. Lower back down. This time open the legs into a V. Hands in between the legs. Lift up, reach forwards and back down. That's one set, we're doing five. Bend the knees again, lifting up, A. Straighten the legs, B. Open the legs, reach through, C. That's two. Let's pick up the pace, A. Legs straight, B. Legs wide, C. That's three, A, B. You've got this, legs wide, C. And again, A, B, and C. I think that's five, it might be four. Let's do one more, why not lift up? You're nearly there, straighten the legs, open the legs, and hug the legs. Heroic effort. Give yourself a little rock. This time link your fingers around your left knee or shin. From here, straighten the right leg up towards the sky and slowly reach it away from you at a 45 degree angle. Curl the nose up towards the left knee. Option to pause here, or if it feels okay, lower the right leg down just above the floor. Lift it back up to 45 degrees. Five, four, knee to nose, three, two, one, switch legs, keep the head lifted, leg starts at 45 degrees, option to lower it down for five, four, three, two, one, both knees come in, take a moment to rest, you might reach the legs out, if that feels okay, rock the hips, yeah, ah. From here, as you wiggle the hips and circle the wrists, let's give them some love. And then again, last little round, bring the knees in, knees above hips, shins parallel to the floor, and bring your fingertips to the side of your head, elbows out. We're gonna curl up. From here, bring your right elbow and your left knee towards each other and start to straighten the right leg out. Let's switch sides. Knee comes in, left elbow to right knee. And then we're going for 10. Switch, nine. Switch, eight. Tap the elbow to knee, seven. Six, five, four, three, two. Get ready to hold. One, we're gonna hold, hold, hold. Switch, hold, hold. Hold and release. Ah, stretch out. Arms overhead. <sighs> so as we cool things down, draw both knees into the chest. And if it feels okay to do so, take the knees over to one side, open the arms into a twist. Ah. <sighs> Big breaths out through your mouth. In this position, if it feels good, you could take the arm that's on the bottom to hold behind the, the knee, the top knee. You could straighten that leg out if that feels good. You could even walk the hand down towards the ankle, the calf, if that feels okay. IT band stretch down the side of the leg. 
and then let's come back and switch sides. And again, you could straighten the top leg and walk that hand down. Just to get a little more into the outer hip if that feels good to you. And then coming back. And now, let's place the feet flat on the floor if that feels okay. If that doesn't feel so good, I'm gonna invite you to come into Happy Baby and just play here in Happy Baby for a few breaths. If your feet can come down, as an option, you could bring the right ankle over the left knee. And if you have an ankle injury low down, you could take the shin or the calf a little bit higher, so the ankle and the foot are free. Again, if this doesn't feel good, go back to Happy Baby, if it feels good. Gently reach behind the left thigh and draw the knee in. So you get a hip stretch, whichever pose you're in. I call this sleeping pigeon or sleepy pigeon. If you're in sleepy pigeon, switch sides. And then as you release, let's come to a short Shavasana. It's lying down. Take a long inhale through your nose and out through your mouth. Ah. And you might simply rest or settle into the stillness. Or if your mind is a little bit more active, why not use it, harness it? And what you can do if that's the case is imagine sending the breath as you inhale to the ankles or the feet or the area that's a little bit in need of some love. Imagine you could send the breath in to the area that needs some love. Almost like the breath could heal or refresh or renew. When you're ready, begin to wiggle the fingers. Reach the arms overhead. And in your own way, hug the knees in. And find a way to come up and sit which works for you. Whatever transition is the easiest. So whatever position you're in, just lifting the chest. Hands could join if that feels good to you. And just bowing a little bit, just acknowledging your effort for being here, for taking the practice, taking time out for yourself. Just because things happen in the body from time to time does not mean we have to lose the practice that we love. We can learn new things, explore new dimensions. So to that sense of adventure, take a little bow and we'll close here. So it's a real pleasure to be with you. I hope you found this helpful. Please leave me feedback below. I really love hearing from you. And let me know what works for you, what you'd like to see more of next time. And I'll see you next time. Until then, enjoy your practice.